Chapter 2 of The Eye of Argon by Jim Thighs Arriving after dusk in Gorzom, Grigner descended down a dismal alley, reining his horse before a beaten tavern. The red-haired giant strode into the dimly lit hostelry, reeking of foul odors and cheap wine. The air was heavy with chalking fumes spewing from smouldering torches encased within Thedon's earthen-packed walls. Tables were clustered with groups of drunken thieves and cutthroats, tossing dice or making love to willing prostitutes. Eyeing a slender female crouched alone at a nearby bench, Grigner advanced, wishing to wholesomely occupy his time. The flickering torches cast weird shafts of luminescence, dancing over the half-naked harlot of his choice. Her stringy, orchid twines of hair swaying gracefully over the lithe, opaque nose as she raised a half-drained mug to her pale, red lips. Glancing upward, the alluring complexion noted the stalwart giant as he rapidly approached. A faint glimmer sparked from the pair of deep blue ovals of the amorous female as she motioned toward Grigner, enticing him to, to join her. The barbarian seated himself upon a stool at the wench's side, exposing his body, naked save for a loincloth brandishing a long steel broadsword, an iron spiralled battle helmet, and thick leather sandals to her unobstructed view. There is need to occupy your time, barbarian, questioned the female. Only if something worth offering is within my reach, stated Grigner as his hands crept to embrace the tempting female, who welcomed them with open willingness. From where do you come, barbarian, and by what are you called? gasped the complying wench as Grigner smothered her lips with the blazing touch of his flaming mouth. The engrossed titan ignored the queries of the inquisitive female, pulling her towards him and crushing her sagging nipples to his yearning chest. Without struggle, she gave in, winding her soft arms around the harshly bronzed hide of Grigner, corded shoulder blades, as his calloused hands caressed her firm, protruding busts. <laughs> "'You make love well, wench,' admitted Grigner, as he reached for the vessel of potent wine his charge had been quaffing. A flying foot caught the mug Grigner had taken hold of, sending its blood-red contents sloshing over a flickering crescent, leashing tongues of bright orange flame to the foot-trodden floor. "'Remove yourself, Sirrah! The wench belongs to me!' blabbered a drunken soldier, too far consumed by the influences of his viral brew to take note of the superior size of his adversary. Grigner, lithely bounded from the startled female, his face lit up to an ashen fe red ferocity, and his eyes locked in a searing feral blaze towards the swaying soldier. "'To hell with you, braggart!' bellowed the angered Encordian as he hefted his finely honed broadsword. The staggering soldier clumsily reached toward the pommel of his dangling sword, but before his hands ever touched the oaken hilt, a silvered flash was slicing the heavy air. The thews of the savage's lashing right arm bulged from the glistening bronze hide as his blade bit deeply into the soldier's neck, lopping off the confused head of his senseless tormentor. With a nauseating thud, the severed oval topped, toppled to the floor, as the segregated torso of Grigner's bovine antagonist swayed, then collapsed in a pool of swirled crimson. In the confusion, the soldiers' fellows confronted Grigner with unsheathed cutlasses, directed toward the latter's scowling makeup. "'The slut should have picked his quarry more carefully,' warred the victor in a mocking baritone growl as he wiped his dry, dripping blade on the prostrate form and returned it to its scabbard. "'The fool should have shown more prudence. However, you shall rue your actions while rotting in the pits,' stated one of the sprawled shoulders' comrades. Grigner's hands began to remove his blade from its leather housing, but retarded the motion in, the f in face of the blades waving before his face. "'Dismiss your hand from the hilt, barbarian, or you shall find a foot of steel sheathed in your gizzard.' Grigner weighed his position, observing his plight, whereupon he took the soldier's advice as the only logical choice. To attempt to hack his way from his present predicament would only warrant certain death. He was of no mind to bring upon his own demise if an alternate path presented itself.' 
The will to necessitate his life forced him to yield to the superior voice in hopes of a moment of carelessness later upon the part of his captors in which he could effect a more plausible means of escape. "'You may steady your arms. I will go without a struggle.' "'Your decision is a wise one, yet perhaps you would have been better off if you had forced death.' The soldier's mouth wrinkled to a sadistic grin of knowing mirth as he prodded his prisoner on with a sword-point. 